400 stores, 12,500 jobs. After 90 years of trading, Wilco is entering administration. But what exactly does that mean? Well, when a company goes into administration, it's a legal way of acknowledging that the company can no longer run in its current form. Joining the likes of Woolworths and Toys R Us, it seems Wilco is destined for the high street graveyard. Hello, I'm Glenn and welcome back to Source to Store. In today's video, we're going to be going around a few Wilcos in my local area to explore the bargains produced by the administration process and see if we can find any profitable products to resell on Amazon. Now, before we go any further, it's completely obvious to note that the loss of over 12,000 jobs is nothing to get excited about and never a good thing. But all emotion aside from it for a moment, in administration, stock is sold cheap. At the end of the day, the administrators have come into the business with an attempt to try and save it. This will involve trying to plug holes in their cash flow issues that they have by selling off stock and any other assets to try and meet their immediate requirements. So then no one should be blamed for going out to buy a bargain to either resell or to keep yourself as at the end of the day all you're doing is helping to cement those jobs for a few extra weeks to see if a sale can potentially go through the business or more generally guarantees the pay of these workers whilst the stores do remain open. With that said then let's go out and find some bargains and see how much profit we can make when reselling on Amazon. Hello everyone, today you join me on what is a bit of a sad RA trip to be honest. We're gonna be going around some of the Wilcos in my local area to see what the sort of reductions are and uh, just generally how they're doing since they announced that they're going into administration. Now it has been over a week since the initial sale period was announced and as far as I am aware, they have reached the point in which no more offers can be accepted and nothing really came through. As far as I've seen online, there'll be a major split of assets in different areas based on who wants to buy up different property locations, but we'll get into that a little later. We're at the first Wilco we'll be going to today and I'll be going to a few different types of Wilco, like one in a shopping center, one on an industrial estate. It's the most intrusive and ugly satellite tower for phones and 5G I've ever seen and the signal is not even great. So we've arrived here at the first location for Wilco's and immediately we've walked past a closed shop. This time it was an Argos. First of all, there's big signs advertising on the way in that they're having an administration sale and showing you the breakdown of percentages of what you might get off in each section. So we picked up a few of these hose locks here, which are gonna make us five or six pounds per unit. A bit of a slower seller, but when you've got reductions on a big name brand like this, you just take the opportunities when you can. It's also weird seeing things like Halloween stuff out already, but I suppose if you know your business isn't gonna survive until then and you've got warehouses full, you might as well sell it. And here we are then, another profitable product with these mole granules. Uh, they're gonna make us about one or two pounds a unit as well. So we picked up as many of those as we could fit in a basket. There were some areas of the store that weren't reduced very much at all, like this pets area here, just just down to 10% and with a successful checkout we headed straight back to the car. Okay then so definitely not a bad first haul in that Wilco. We got four of the watering sets that you would have seen and we also got eight of the anti-mole granules. Bargains like these if I need to hold them for a while I really don't mind. So let's head on to the next Wilco. This one's going to be a slightly different one, a bit more of an industrial estate one here so it's going to be slightly larger. We are arrived at the next Wilco already. Now, part of what I've been reading online says that the people most likely to buy up Wilco sites are the discount stores like B&M, TK Maxx, Home Bargains, because they like places in the country and in each town where customers can park up for free and ensure that they can get their bargains back to their car without having to pay for, you know, car park tickets and lug it around or get on a bus somewhere, etc., etc. Now, this is all great and all, except when you get to a place like I am now. There is on this site already a TK Maxx, a B&M is being built, and just five minutes around the corner, there is a Home Bargains on an industrial park as well. So the question is then, is as we look around this Wilco, what comes and fills this gap in the high street? Or in this case, what comes and fills this area on an industrial estate? So comparative to the last one, this Wilco was much, much busier and it certainly showed on the shelves. A lot of the shelves are completely ransacked and simply just filled with whatever they had left. Just absolutely stacks of wipes left. As you can see, they're just trying to get rid of everything as these products are way past their best before date, but they don't care. This then, as you can see, is the site for the new B&M and there's the TK Maxx over there already. So what's gonna fill the gap? Well, then that last Wilco was absolutely ravaged. I can't say I'm surprised because it's quite easy to get to, but still, it was weird seeing so much gone so early. Like, it's not that deep into the reduction period or the administration period, so hey ho. Got one more coming up in the middle of a shopping center in a busy town on the south coast. So um, let's see what this one has in store. 
So we start off with some mole granules again then, and as you can see, there were plenty more of these hose locks left. What I was surprised with in this store was just how much stuff they still had left and how little the discounts were in the store. Say goodbye to the Christmas trees, but we've got our bag of goodies. One wheel got all secured and I managed to lose my parking ticket, but the guy at the uh, on the button was really nice. The button, the information button, I don't know what you call it. So then a few great bargains whilst out at Wilco, but not as many as I thought, with a few areas of the store having not been discounted at all, such as toiletries and some areas with very low reductions of 10% or 20%, such as pet care. We also sadly heard today that a buyer has not and will not be found to buy Wilco as a whole. And so it's far more likely that individual assets or grouped assets from the Wilco business will be sold off in various different pieces. So who's to blame in the downfall of Wilco? Well, I'm not gonna point fingers at anyone and by no means am I a business expert, but there's a few things that I've noticed and found in the last few years with Wilco. Firstly, they never seem to catch up with the online marketplace like other retailers did. Wilco's online shop has been poor at best and was really late to joining up its stores with its online presence through things like Click and Collect. With over 400 physical stores, it always had great potential for this link up. Secondly, of course, Wilco shops are also mainly in the high street having filled holes that Woolworths and other shops left which in my opinion isn't the best place for a homeware shop to be considering you're going to have to be carrying big bags of bulky items back to your car which is generally in a car park which also costs you money to park it but it must be said that the owners of Wilco saw this coming a mile off having stripped out millions worth of dividends over the last few years, really trying to squeeze out any juice left in what really was a decaying fruit. And when you start to see the numbers, 77 million pounds paid out in dividends in the last 10 years is fucking outrageous for a business doing as poorly as Wilco was. Last year, the directors and the owners took out dividends of over 3 million pounds, despite losses of over 38.5 million. And in 2018, over 3.2 million was paid out in dividends, despite Wilco racking up losses of nearly 65 million pounds. It's why then when I go out and spend about 100 quid on some cheap hose locks, or in this case mole granules, to make a few extra quid, I don't feel any shame in it whatsoever. If anyone is to blame for this company's downfall, I suggest you start pointing fingers at the owners before you start pointing at resellers and other groups such as Amazon for taking up sales that Wilco never would have got. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please do subscribe and go back and check out some of the other videos in our catalog. We'll be keeping you up to date on all things Amazon and stretching out into some other business ventures in the future as well. And who knows, maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll have a video coming out on the final day of Wilco when it sadly does inevitably close. Thanks very much for watching and catch you in the next one.